Okay, let's talk about something just a little bit different. Psychology. And specifically, psychology of faces and names. And I guess here I actually wanted to start with a famous quote by George Orwell. At 50, everyone has the face he deserves. And though it might sound kind of poetic, turns out he was actually right. Like, physically right. Because in a study we're discussing today, the researchers actually discovered that, for some reason, we as humans can generally actually guess someone's name by just looking at their face relatively accurately. Which is a result of an unusual social expectation that seems to influence how we tend to internalize our faces throughout our lifetimes. And so, how wonderful person, this is Anton. Today, let's discuss Can Names Shape Facial Appearance? A kind of a follow-up study to several different experiments from approximately seven years ago that basically have the same answer. The answer being yes. It looks like names can actually change our faces. Which is bizarre, unexpected, but so far the science seems to point at this being the truth. But before we start anything, let's I guess do a kind of a psychological test. Take a look at these pictures and see if you can guess the names. Who is this? Rosie, Angel, Phoebe, Sophie. I'll give you a few seconds to think about this, maybe write it down, but you're not going to find out the answer until the end of the video. Because obviously I want you to watch the whole video. And, okay wait, you can technically skip the video and see the end, and then that kind of defeats the purpose of this. Fine, I guess you win. You'll know the answers really soon. Alright, so this is the first one. Now take a look at the second one. Will, Ethan, Ian, Harry. Got it? Alright, next one. Steven, Ben, Norman, Matt. Who's this? Caroline, Grace, Monica, Alice. What about this guy? Roger, Tim, Edward, John. And lastly, Daisy, Emma, Rachel, Ellie. Okay, if you wrote this down or if you've basically participated, let's see how you did. Although, okay, wait. So in general, in the previous study from 2017, the researchers discovered that most of us were actually able to guess these strangers' names with up to 40% accuracy, way higher than 25% that's expected by chance. And out of these six pictures, if you even got just two right, you're already at 33%, above the expected value. And so, let me give you the answers. This was Phoebe, number three, Harry, Stephen, Alice, Tim, and Daisy. So, how many did you get? I think the first time I did this, I got three, which is 50%, and that's already above expected value. And so, the conclusion from this initial study was that, well, this is a really bizarre phenomenon, but it seems to be something that's intercultural and something that appears in a lot of different situations. For example, in the West, people called Bob may have slightly rounder faces compared to someone called Tim. And that's because Bob by itself is also a word that kind of looks round. Also, in general, someone named Catherine, for some reason, possibly for historical reasons, is expected to be a little bit more successful than someone who's named Scarlett. Then, with names like Daisy or other similar names, like for example Rose, we expect someone that might resemble a flower. Or even a beautiful flower. Or someone who possibly looks a little bit more feminine. Whereas someone named Elizabeth, just like the Queen, is going to have a more serious, almost like a royal nature. So they might have their hair in a certain way, might smile less, and might even have fewer wrinkles as a result. Now this might all sound really far-fetched, but then the scientists did something else that was kind of cool and I guess somewhat conclusive. They actually used a facial recognition software to try to train the algorithm in order to recognize faces and names linking them together. And bizarrely enough, it was actually able to find certain similarities between faces with certain names, eventually forming a kind of a, I guess, name map. And then by using this map, the algorithm was actually able to predict things with approximately 60% accuracy. And so by using approximately 94,000 facial images, the algorithm was able to get between 54 to 60% prediction rate compared to expected 25%. And this was independent of ethnicity, independent of any kind of a socioeconomic status, and at first even age, as long as we were looking at adults. And so the initial study concluded that we basically have a kind of a cultural idea about our own names, and specifically about how they sound, what meaning they might have, and what connection it might have to famous people, which then creates what the scientists even refer to as a kind of a Dorian Gray effect. 
based on the picture of Dorian Gray, where the protagonist basically affects his own portrait through various actions and through various deeds. And so in other words, it's a kind of a self-fulfilling prophecy. Because we believe our names mean something or sound like something, or maybe attributed to some kind of an action, famous deed or even a famous person, we tend to basically, completely unconsciously, change over time. Which when I heard about the first time was absolutely, you know, mind-blowing. And because in this case this wasn't just some kind of a subjective interpretation by various subjects in experiments, but actually included an algorithm that was able to successfully predict many different names based on people's faces, here the argument was super strong. But this was an older study from 2017. And now the same researchers, along with the new team members, discovered additional things about this phenomenon by also including children as participants in order to prove this point even more. And so here, this time, a lot of faces included both adults and children, once again with four possible names as choices, but without any additional features, such as for example religious items or various types of backgrounds that would add additional biases. And when the picture of adults was shown to both children and adults, in pretty much every case, the results were once again very similar. The participants chose the correct name at rates much higher than just pure chance. And this was true for both children and adults. However, when they saw the children faces, and specifically children that were only 9 to 10 years old, the participants could not actually guess the name very well. And once again this applied to both children and adults. And so even though both children and adults matched adult faces very well, they could not do the same with kids. And once again, once they've actually done this with machine learning, by adding a facial recognition system, the results were not as good. And here the algorithm even discovered that adult faces were a lot more similar in terms of names and facial features compared to faces of children. But the most brilliant part of the study was when they actually did something else entirely different. They took those pictures of kids once again and then they artificially aged them once again using modern AI. And so basically here we had kids that were artificially aged compared to natural adults. And as you can see, those artificially aged children, or I guess their pictures, did not actually have any connection with names compared to real faces. And so overall the results suggest just one thing. It once again confirms that as we age, we tend to acquire unusual facial features that seem to represent a kind of a social image or social perspective of a certain name. And so the similarity between people's faces really seems to be some kind of a self-fulfilling prophecy. With this facial appearance changing over time, basically aligning with various social stereotypes that are associated with this name. And because these names are social constructs, we basically somehow, without even realizing, tend to reshape ourselves, or I guess reshape our own appearance and our own faces, to fit the social expectation. And though previously this was almost impossible to test empirically, now because of this facial recognition test, the data was very accurate. But here I think this is just scratching the surface, because technically, for all we know, maybe this goes way beyond just appearance and obviously affects our behaviors, affects our personalities, and over time might even affect our health. Now obviously none of this is testable right now, because here the scientists would have to set up a much more complex experiment that can actually measure all of this, but when it comes to faces, right now the data is very accurate. But I guess it would still be interesting to find out if this really affects all cultures or if in some cultures this is actually a lot different. For example, a lot of East Asian countries where I currently live, names and even the way people interact with those names are very different from the West. And so it would be interesting to find out how this would be different here, for example in Korea, Japan and China, compared to what was discovered in the West. Either way though, I guess it's still a mind-blowing discovery and something to think about next time you have kids and decide to give them a name. As a matter of fact, I'm actually kind of curious to find out what my kids are going to say once they actually discover this and once they're old enough to start thinking about how their names ended up influencing their lives and how our decision to give them these names might have actually changed so many things for them. So maybe that's something I'll discuss with them sometimes in the future. But anyway, this is definitely a somewhat profound discovery and something to maybe think about once in a while. 
But I guess once we discover something else, or once the scientists behind this study find something else super mind-blowing, we'll come back and talk more about this in some of the future videos. Until then, thank you for watching, subscribe, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, support this channel on Patreon by joining channel membership, or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.